I already edited the whole video you're about to watch. I know, that's crazy. A um, little bit of a different video this week. Also, look at the setup. Sorry for the bright lights. Uh, I got so many lights when I'm recording and one for all that orangey stuff over there, which makes it all look pretty good. Sadly, I also have to be in it, so that's, but the light lifts it up as well. Um, video is already shot as I just completely edited. So I'm keeping this very short because it's already 18 minutes now. I have to add this to it. It's getting, a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, doing a lot of pixel pushing, pixel art graphics, showing you a lot of stuff cre being created. Haven't done one of these videos for a while. So this is a good thing. So uh, let's just dive into the video. All right, let me just um, start it up right here. Okay, so did a bunch of um, drawing this week just to get my head a little bit um, in a creative mood again and away from all the debugging and stuff I've been doing. Um, first up is a little uh, spinning loading icon. I had the icon looks like a flash or an SD card. Um, did this in residual, figured I'd do it as well as in regular city. It shows up when the game is loading stuff or uh, generating stuff or sometimes uh, faking a little bit of loading time because uh, saving the city or generating the city, things like that happen pretty quickly, but you also want to give the player a little room to breathe. So sometimes this icon shows up and then the player knows, okay, something happened, something was loading or saving and the game is safe again, let's continue. Um, I wanted to create it um, or have it spin and animate. Got all of this stuff now in DaVinci, already recorded it. So I'm just gonna do a little like a voiceover uh, as I'm gonna watch it with you. So um, let's let's go, let's let's start the video over here. It's all sped up. Um, the first video is at 500% the drawing time. Yeah, 500% speed. So it's a little bit faster than, than I actually worked, but um, let's just dive in. So animations like this, um, I really like them because it's, it's very simple. And I used to do these a lot for coins in my platform games. Uh, that spinning animation it's really you're squashing the image pretty much and then the side image when you see when you look at the side of it is a little bit more uh, flashy or a little bit highlighted so that it gives a really a shiny uh, shiny surface shiny shiny moment or something like that I, I, this is gonna be hard I'm just gonna wing all this text I haven't really re really thought about what I'm gonna say I'm just I'm gonna watch all this with you um, the thing with this one, normally you can do these animations with like four frames, but because I have this sloped edge on one side, if you flip it, obviously it has to be on the other side. So um, I actually had to do double the amount of animations for it, but that's okay. It's, it's not a lot of work. It's pretty much taking the graphics or the first couple of frames and flipping those. You just have to make sure that the light is still coming from the left. In my case, the light is from the left. So if you flip it, you have to um, make sure those light colors are on the right side. And uh, since I'm doing the back side of this SD card anyway, I might as well give it another icon on the back. So the orange pixel logo will be on there. Uh, the front is an A for anarchy for regulated city. The, the A of regulated city is the A of anarchy. And uh, uh, this way it's a nice uh, shiny animation with, with two sides of the flash card or the SD card. So. Um, as you can see, there's not a lot to it, um, although I might simplify it because I, I know what I'm doing, so I, I'm not sure. But if you follow what I'm doing here and, and just look at it a little bit slow, a little bit slower than I'm, I'm recording and playing it now, it, there's not a lot to make this work. And you can do this effect, like I said, with half the amount of frames if you do it on a coin or something like that, a pickup or something that's that's completely looks the same on both sides um, it can be done with like four frames and it's just squashing that image and then just cleaning up the pixels here and there for the image that's shown at the center and of course a little bit light and shadow work for me the light usually comes from the top left and um, that's pretty much it oh, whoa all right uh, we're moving into the next animation uh, that was the SD card this is part of one of my animations. I have an intro animation to the game where the meteorite crashes. I think I showed it a few weeks ago. But um, then your first tutorial mission is walk into the street, uh, find this asteroid or meteorite and um, take a sample from it. And when you do that sample, it's, it's press the A button for a couple of seconds and then 
you were suddenly thrown back in headquarters and no explanation. So I figured the best explanation would be a quick and short little animation thingy. I'm doing this very rough, these animations. I have a very thick black outline and I'm, I'm copy and pasting stuff. It's, um, it gives a certain feel to it, but I think I might go in and clean up a little bit of it, especially the black, the thick black line. I might add a little bit more detail and shade to those so that they are look, uh, well, less thick, I guess. Um, but it's a lot of fun creating animations like this. And this is also the process I often use for big boss fights or big boss creatures. Uh, draw them very roughly and then go in and add details like light, shadow and other details they might need. Uh, my meteorite was pretty simple, had a smaller version, just created a bigger version. All that ooze in it is a copy and paste from the smaller version. Uh, and now we add these hands. The idea is that you're taking a sample of the meteorite or your hands are moving a little bit towards it. Um, drawing this hand was pretty simple. Uh, using my hand, look at my hand like this. I have a light over there and look at it. And then pretty much that's the hand you see on the screen, my hand. And then I figured I wanted another hand on the left side, but it should look a little bit different. So again, I just used my hand like this and I started drawing to the thing I was looking at, my hand. So. Um, sometimes it can be that simple. You just need a good reference and you just need to be able to uh, draw what you see. That's probably the trick to doing art. Uh, draw what you see. And of course, not every artist can do it in the same way. That's why we have modern art and all those things. But um, that's, yeah, that's the trick. You have to somehow translate this, the stuff you see into um, drawing that on paper or on the screen. And we're already in the second frame of the animation. Um, this is pretty much, uh, the ooze is gonna be dripping all over your hand. As you touch the meteorite, that ooze is coming onto your hand and it's gonna be multiple frames. Um, my reference for this, or the idea I had for this was pretty much a Venom from Marvel, Spider-Man. Um, it has all that, that when it touches uh, Eddie Brock or whatever it is these days, because they change these things every now and then in the timeline. But when it touches him or, or covers him, there's, I, I remember this from the comic books uh, back in the day, back in the nineties, reading about Venom. It was drawn pretty well, I think by Todd McFarlane, who then went on to create Spawn and all those things. He had a amazing style and, and this is pretty much where I had this, it's still in my head on how he draw, uh, drew those things and how, how it looked. So I'm just um, recalling my memory on all of that and then drawing it as the best way I can. Uh, the ooze is some sort of shiny living organism that takes over other living organisms, but also uh, can control uh, technology. And it's a little bit of the bad guy in the whole Orange Pixel universe. Uh, although I only uh, started working on the ooze, I think in Snake War was the first, probably. Maybe it was in Space Grunts too as well. Well, it, it's in Residual, there it's really where it started or where you really get more explanation about the ooze and, and affecting whole planets and whole galaxies. And in Regulator City, it's, um, it's on Earth. So yeah, the ooze is now on Earth and um, you need to uh, somehow uh, get rid of it or manage it. So um, as you can see here, just a bunch of animation frames where the ooze gets um, controls more and more of the hand, takes over more space. Um, I could have copy pasted these frames, but I wanted to recreate all this purple pinkish stuff so that it has more of an organic change as you flip to the frames. There's not a lot of animations using I'm using for this, like four or five hands, different hands. So um, that's also part of this animation or the animation type I'm using for this game. It's very rough, it's very raw. Um, it's a bit inspired by the 90s and, and there was just a lot of limitations on the amount of graphics you could use back then. So I want to try to recreate that style by using less animation frames and just um, adding movement from code and all those type of things. And now it's on to the latest or the last animation frame or last frame or scene of this animation. Um, this is pretty much pretty much you in a DNA pod. Um, and there will be text underneath explaining that you got touched or you got influenced or controlled by the ooze, but you got uh, 
put into this DNA part and then uh, you got healthy again but some of that ooze was left behind and you now have some sort of special ability that also then explains the special ability you have in the game um, so this animation even though it's very short and, and raw and only shown like once after the tutorial it's still an important part of the story and of explaining to the player what's going on or at least i hope so a lot of players won't even read but that's it uh, that's up to them um, I'm actually modeling this after that tiny one in the top right corner of the image, uh, which was done by uh, DMAC Dylan, uh, the intern, a few years ago working on Regulated City. Um, I'm now trying to recreate that, but a little bit bigger and a little, a little bit different. But um, the idea has to be the same because those parts, yes, I will encounter those parts in the game, so you do have to see some similarities there. Um, the pod is a lot bigger than the background as we will be scrolling this into the screen so um, going big on it and then there will be text underneath and um, I think um, yeah we're almost at the end of this animation and then I'll just show you a little bit of the gameplay how it looks in game I also did all the code for this but I'm not showing all that code or maybe I'll just give you a little screenshot in a minute um, but writing code isn't really that interesting. This is really just um, throwing pictures on the screen at the right time, moving them in certain intervals and all very simple. I'll, I'll just show you a little bit of the code in a minute. It's not, it's not really impressive or interesting, but it does the job and that's the most important thing because if I'm adding more of these animations, I'm still just one game developer. I, I need to somehow manage all my time working on these things and making them work and still continue to complete the game. So um, yeah that's it that that's that's all the drawing i've did if you talk like this very quickly it's like maybe 10 minutes eight minutes and it was a little bit more work than that but um let me show you the results of this just um yeah let me just stop this one and then i'll show you the result of uh, the flashy icon but also this animation so the code is pretty simple this is the thing that really renders these animations i just drew just that one so um animation scene is just a number going from one to how many frames we have or scenes we have i think i have four or yeah i just drew three but i have four. First one is the meteorite where your hands are going left hand is drawn here with a little bit of a, a scene and a co with a little bit of movement so that it actually um, animates so that it's not as static as we just saw in, in drawing it. Of course the right hand it will go on for a couple of seconds or frames and then it will move over to the next uh, maybe play a little sound effect. Scene 2 is the ooze taking over the hand those are those frames um, we add some random lines at the background giving it some sort of tension and speed and stuff happening. The hand is shaking a little bit just randomly drawing it on screen and then uh, playing some sounds, male choking, already have those in the game, so it was very easy. So you hear some uh, 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 sound like that as he's been getting controlled by the ooze. Um, some screaming, move on to the next scene uh, in the DNA part, which is the background, and then slowly pan or scroll that big image I drew that's slowly coming onto the screen. Um, when that's done, move on to the next scene which isn't drawn but this is a copy from uh, the first animation it's pretty much uh, showing the headquarters regulated city so um all right enough talk let me just show you how that all look and looks and sounds when we um play it in the game here we go I'm booting up the game i hope you guys like videos like this this is very interesting for me as well i've, I've haven't oh at the bottom right corner sorry there's the, the loading icon as you can see it just tells the player something's happening let me turn down my volume and um, loading icon done. All right, animation. Uh, sorry if you hear me typing, I have my microphone over there. I'll type very softly. All right, animation one, here we go. And now we're back. Normally we would be in headquarters, but I've just cheated myself into the animation. Uh, let me uh, turn off the audio a little bit. So um, yeah, this does show that you can do a lot of stuff with very simple or fairly simple graphics um, and just some good code that animates and moves it. 
I'm not really happy with the DNA part moving in. That's still a little bit of a static thing. So maybe I'll add another one or two animation frames so that he at least moves inside the pot. That will give it a lot more life and, and make it more interesting to look at. But um, yeah, this is how the animation are done. Um, I think we have a little bit more time. Let me just um, play through the whole um, intro for a bit. Let me check. Uh, preferences oh i already reset it all right so the first animation will play now um, i'm just playing morph generating city there we go first animation should show this a few weeks ago not happy about that scene but it will work for now city hq and then we move to regular city um we're first showing you the street because that gives you a better idea of that you're actually you can select this building to get into regulator hq and then we are here we talk to this guy we got a space rock fuming in the streets we got some weird reading from it and we need you to go grab a sample for our scientists to study well sounds fairly simple um we'll move into the street and right now you still have your team with you i'm actually thinking about removing your team from the tutorial you'll go in alone and you'll get that team uh, or you can recruit a team after uh, these events so that you're walking alone on this one i'm not sure yet but i think i'm gonna do that um yeah swap y to uh, take down these guys silently and stealthy there we go and then we move on and um we'll get to the asteroid meteorite whatever i'm still not sure what the difference is but i'm sure somebody knows the difference between a meteorite and an asteroid take off these uh, little creatures here and there let's kill all of them because that's how we are as humans we don't like weird aliens uh, sample it and it will trigger the animation i can skip it but i'll just uh, let it play one more time because i think it's cool i think it ends up pretty nicely even the hand even though it's just four or five frames it's it works and this one just is a little bit too static or maybe i should add more to the right side of it some background not sure um back in headquarters talk to this guy again good to see you back on your feet seems you did some get gain some sort of special ability this allows me to explain it a little bit and um i think this opens up the story or makes the story clear with just a minimal amount of work i'm not a huge studio with 400 people working on this game so i need to work within a lot of a lot of confinements and restrictions and and limitations and um i think this works i think it yeah i like it so um start the game that's that's it start the game and that's it a lot of graphic creation this week um also let me close this one and um this one created a new background or marketing material type stuff i have to keep tweaking these things because i'm still not happy with it uh for now this is the new one i place it on discord as well you can download it, grab it and place it as your background or whatever uh, change that as well so i did a lot of graphics this week um, also pushed out the demo which was live last week as the last week's video went live so check steam um, a lot of change and improvements to that demo it's it's worth a check or worth a play session so uh, go check it out uh, this animation is actually in there already so um yeah that that's that was my week that's it for this week's video uh, like subscribe comment below let me know what you think about the animation of course hop on the discord to hang out and say hi uh, more and more people are actually doing that after the videos and hopping and saying hopping in and saying hi so uh, thanks for that uh, make sure to hang around and just uh, have a lot of fun we got a couple of new members being active there so that's always great to see and i will see you uh, next week all right bye